Today is an exciting day as we get a glimpse of when the Cosmic Rust desktop could be released to us, as well as the road to alpha. We'll be checking out source builds and reading today about a potential roadmap. We start the new year by asking the question, so when is the alpha? According to System76 here, the goal for Cosmic Desktop Environment Alpha is to feel like a complete product, albeit with features still to come, with a more stable alpha, we can better collect feedback on usability and focus on completing the settings panel. From here, we can work towards an eventual 24.04 release over the summer. So this seems like a potential release of trying to get Cosmic out for the end line would be summer of 2024, which we're now under six months away from. It's awesome to see some sort of information about this. Let's keep talking about what's going to be necessary in order to get to this phase. The remaining work is divided into three phases, remaining features, design matching, and bug fixes, bug fixes documentation, and the build of the ISO files. Remaining features here refers to completing a minimum list of features we find acceptable for introducing Cosmic Desktop Environment to the world. These features are listed below. However, there's still more features to look forward to after the alpha release. So make sure to stick around to figure out when there's a potential alpha release, at least what System76 is aiming to do. But before we do, let's check out some of the sources, including Cosmic Terminal. Let me go and show you what this currently looks like. If we launch a terminal, Super T, that creates a new terminal. There's currently two tabs. I don't think this is the way it's meant to be, but all good there. You can create new tabs as you want. I'm gonna interact with the system a little bit so you can see what things look like if I do LS. We notice simple blue shading for the folders or directories and anything in white is going to be a basic file. So if I wanted to look at my basic file here, like main RS, looks like I deleted the contents of it. So not much in there, but as I'm working with the terminal, you can tell what things currently look like. Very good. I think they're doing a great job with this. There's a blue outline on the focused current window. So since the terminal is focused, there is this blue outline. There's also a blue line that separates our current working terminal from the various different tabbed terminals. You'll also notice a more predominant blue color over here. That just tells us which is the current working tab. Subtle things, but I definitely like how they make things pronounced with the colors. So there's no guesswork in where you're working or what you're working on. If we change directories, for example, I go to the desktop, you'll notice over here, this gets updated, tells us we're on the desktop, as well as what it looks like down below. Green tells us our current user and host name. We can also change the size of the terminal. I'm gonna actually maximize it so we can get the full view. I'll close out of a few tabs up top, and then I'm gonna clear things out and log in as the root user so we can see what things look like here. Password still remains hidden. You can't see anything as you're entering your password in. It's not gonna show up, not a big deal. Just press enter once you think you've got it in. Looks like I messed the password up, so I'm gonna try again. There we go. After I'm logged in and I changed users, now I'm the root or super privileged user, it changes back to color white instead of the green that we had before for a normal user. Behind that as well, green changes to white for the host name and we are given the absolute path instead of the home directory for the current user and then wherever we're currently located with respect to that in blue. Subtle but great changes. You'll also notice up top, we are no longer transparent. That's another thing that we keep seeing across these apps. Notice at the bottom, as I'm using and dragging around the terminal, I get an icon that shows up that just tells me what I'm controlling, which is currently the terminal icon. I think you'll start noticing that there's a theme here, a transparent header also being displayed here on the terminal, as well as we saw it in files. So that looks like a system-wide kind of theme. From what I understand, we will be able to control this. So if you do not like transparent backgrounds or transparent headers, you won't have to use them. Some options here in the new terminal. Of course, it's still under development, so things are subject to change, but new tabs, new windows, closing the tab or quitting out. Editing currently lets you copy, paste, select all and find, and view allows you to get to the settings. In the settings, I do like how they make it easy to change the default font size. I did that right away. Also, whether or not you wanna show the header bar, giving you a more minimal look. There's also advanced font settings, including things like font stretch, weight, and boldness. You can change out your default font fairly easily, as well as set the current syntax theme 
or overall terminal theme. Let's set it to light just so you can see what this kind of looks like. Definitely changes things. We keep a transparent background, keep similar colors, but the background becomes more of a grayish white color. Anyways, personally like the dark theme. So I'm gonna go back to that, close out, and now we've checked out a majority of the terminal. It works great. The performance here is what I would expect it to be. No glitching, no artifacts, just a great way to interact with your system. Anyway, some more information. We built a terminal application for Cosmic Desktop Environment. Cosmic Terminal, as we just saw, features a bi-directional rendering left-right and right-left languages, ligatures, desktop themes, syntax themes, and GPU rendering. This terminal emulator was built by using Alacrity Terminal Framework with a custom renderer based on Cosmic Text, while GPU rendering uses Glyphon and WGPU with soft buffer and tiny skia as a fallback. We are able to optimize this to have performance similar to Alacrity, both in VTE Bench with displaying an eight megabyte file. All right, next thing we'll talk about is Cosmic Render. Let's go check this out in source as well. So I'm gonna launch it here in the terminal, Cosmic Render, and it's telling me here are the commands, so that helps a lot. Let's just do Cosmic Render and see if we can list. Okay, so here are all the different modes that are available for the current screen or display. I have many modes in currently 1920 by 1080 with 60 hertz is the correct one. So I could use Cosmic Render to change things around. I don't have to use the settings. Again, in a minimal setup, this might be the way to go. So I'm gonna just change it to something like, well, let's just do 1440 by 900. How I can do this is I can say Cosmic Render, and then I'll specify mode that I wanna change the mode. I'll do the virtual one display with 1440 as the width and 900 as the height. And notice that instantly changes things here in the background. That's why it's so fantastic because if I didn't have access to settings, I can easily change it through the terminal or if I just think it's easier to do this. Another reason it's exciting to have access to these commands is you can actually change it in your bash terminal to launch one of these deals if you're having trouble with the settings or even add more modes in. I really like using xrander over the settings page, especially in systems where I don't even have access to it. So I'm gonna go back to 1920 by 1080 and just change it to full screen because that's my native resolution here. And back to the way they explain it, we created a command line utility for listing and configuring displays in Wayland as you saw a moment ago, which will be used by display settings page in Cosmic Settings. It uses the WLR output configuration Wayland protocols. Screenshots below were taken with Cosmic Terminal Windows. Now available on NixOS, I really went deep into this in another video, talking about the project and its features, and they're continuing to build and port over the Cosmic Desktop environment to NixOS. Quite exciting. Check out that video. I'll put a link in the description below if you'd like to have some more information on that project for NixOS. Features, features, features. They'll be updating this as soon as they get more information on extra features, but so far they have the screenshot tool before our staff outside the Cosmic team experiences the new desktop firsthand, we'll need a screenshot applet so as not to throw off their workflow. Initial designs are already complete for the full screen and windowed screenshots as, as well as screenshots from selection. Here's a little bit of a preview of what things look like with the screenshot tool. You can see below that they have a full window, partial selection, and complete monitor capture. You can capture, save to clipboard, and do other options. Looks like the tool is coming along just fine. Moving on to hybrid graphics, hybrid graphics mode will be the only graphics mode available for Cosmic Desktop Environment alongside a power saving setting that turns off the DGPU to preserve a battery life. Hybrid graphics allows applications to run on the DGPU when requested, but otherwise defaults to the CPU's integrated graphics. And before we move on, make sure to smash that like button for me so others get updated with the latest and greatest in the Cosmic Rust Desktop, Frosted Glass Effect, Frosted Glass, adds a blurred transparency to your visual theming. Unfortunately, there's no way to animate a fog effect when you exhale on your screen. Tiling Applet. Tiling Applet has been designed and includes the option to toggle auto tiling per workspace. It is nice that you can have multiple workspaces with multiple different configurations on whether or not you want to use tiling. And you can tell what they're talking about is the per workspace option. And then down here is where you set whether or not you want to tile the current workspace. They also give you a default for new workspaces and their behavior. So if you create one that you haven't set anything on, it looks like it defaults to floating. 
but still has the fallback of if it does have something set, it will use tiled or floating based on whatever configuration you have for that workspace. Cool idea. Let's keep going on because we're getting close to talking about the alpha release of Cosmic Rust Desktop. And what's awesome is I think it's sooner than you think. Floating window stacks. Stacking allows you to pair windows together across applications like tabs in a web browser. Discussion is underway about how window stacking should behave with floating non-tiled windows. Cosmic app and applet icons. We're iterating icon designs for new Cosmic apps and applets. Will purple make the cut? We'll find out soon enough. On-screen displays. These graphical overlays are what you see when you do things like adjust the volume, brightness, alt tab between applications or turn on airplane mode. Their look should be familiar while matching Cosmic's more futuristic aesthetic. Cosmic's alt tab behavior is also under discussion. Graffiti. A new aesthetic calls for new wallpapers. Rest assured they're bound to be spacey, starry, and all around Cosmic. Lock and login screens. These are designed and in progress, but they'll need working buttons, login functionality, and suspend support to be ready. Cosmic Terminal, as we checked out before, they're still working on adding mouse emulation and the ability to open hyperlinks in the terminal, as well as just ironing out a few wrinkles. Settings, settings, settings. They're currently working on many things in settings, so nothing to report here. Displays, adjust, display orientation, scale, color profile, graphics mode, and more. Designs for display settings are currently being implemented. Input devices, after some tests, we're revising settings in the mouse and touchpad including adjustments for mouse speeds and mouse acceleration. Workspaces, designs for workspaces in Cosmic Desktop environment are under construction based on numerous discussions and features. Considerations include naming, numbering, and dynamic and static, and behavior across multiple monitors. Stay tuned on that one. Wallpapers, wallpaper settings are being refined to improve features like slideshow, background fit, we're getting close. Design matching. In the design matching phase, we'll be polishing up features that already have been implemented and making sure that they match our designs. The app library launcher and notification bubbles are a few implementations that we'll be testing up here. So all the things that we went through here are the basics of trying to get a release out. They have to go back and refine things in all the categories that they were talking about before. But before they get to perfection, they will be offering an alpha, which we talk about here. As you can see, we're fairly close to an alpha version of Cosmic Desktop Environment. If all goes well, we can release the alpha by the end of March. Be on the lookout for more updates in February, as we'll likely have a lot to talk about. So fantastic news. We now have insight on a March or end of March 2024 hopeful date for an alpha release. And when they say alpha release, I think it's going to be quite polished already, as I know the team has been hard at work. And you can tell it definitely shows as some of the components here of their Cosmic Desktop environment feel release ready. Anyways, let me know if you're excited about a potential March 2024 release of the alpha version of the Cosmic Desktop environment. I know we've all been following along for quite a while now, getting antsy to get our hands on Cosmic and start testing to give the team feedback and to have some fun with the new desktop environment. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.